year. So since last year's celebration. Separated, 
um, and lost contact for most of their childhood. And then by happenstance, they were both drafted um, and both went to boot camp at the same place at the same time and were able to reconnect as adults and then stay in touch for the rest of their lives. So That's amazing. the pictures here on this side are another boot camp after, after the war together. So those are really great. All right, we also unveiled two new statues since last year's celebration. We unveiled a couple at last year's celebration, and then we also unveiled two in September. So the first one was one honoring Joe I.A., and he was placed by the New York County Hospital in Louisiana, and he grew up to be a great football player and an even better football coach. Um, and he is in a few different football hall of fames, and his statue is in front of Easy G Sports Grill and was sponsored by Easy G Sports Grill as well. And we were able to have his grandsons attend the unveiling, um, and then their their kids and, and grandkids as well. So it was it was so much fun to have them here, and they were very very nice. Um, our second statue is actually it honors two different orphan train riders, and this new one this one is at Broadway Plaza on the east side, um, and it was sponsored by the Tolman family in honor of um, Bill and Mary Ann Logan, Concordia residents here. And the statue honors George Jacobs de Crow and Irma Craig Schneiders. And George de Crow, um, he, he's kind of a, a unique story. He actually was raised the first couple years of his life um, living in a circus and performing in a circus. And then after an injury, went to go live with his grandmother. And then after her death, ended up um, at the New York Juvenile Asylum and was placed out in Illinois. Um, and he set out on his own at a pretty young age and grew up to work for the John Deere Company. And then Irma Craig Schneiders, the other writer honored in that statue, she was placed in Missouri by the New York County Hospital. Um, and she grew up to be a teacher and a mother. And her daughter, Shirley Andrews, was um, a very early member of the Orphan Train Heritage Society of America and has did a ton of work in just compiling Orphan Train stories and names and beginning our index of writers. So. It was great to have um, much of the, the Schneiders family at that unveiling and uh, many of our community members there. So two great statues we got in the last year. And of course, later today we'll unveil our 37th statue and tomorrow our 38th statue. And we have, I think, two more slated for this fall. Our new hospital will be getting a statue honoring some um, some doctors that were orphan train riders, and then we'll also be getting one um, at a location to be announced, but a great, <laughs> a great statue um, honoring another orphan train rider somewhere in our community this fall. So we've got a few more slated coming up here pretty soon. But we also have some other exciting projects. And the, the biggest one, and I think <coughs> the most exciting one that I've been teasing you with all morning. Um, starting in the next couple weeks, we will have family search volunteers at the museum digitizing all of our American Female Guardian Society records. So this includes those, those history books that I talked about, um, names of the, the children living in their home at various points, histories of what happened to them, their entrance records, their indenture records, their letters, all of those will be photographed by family search and made available online through Family Search. Um, and the couple books that, that we know still exist from the society that we don't have are already on Family Search. So we're excited to have most of their records available online for people to, to use and to research. Um, and I'm particularly excited about this because many of the children that went through the society, the AFGS, weren't, weren't placed on orphan trains, but went back to their families or were placed in New York City, um, and so I'm excited for, for people to be able to find those records because they wouldn't know to come to us, but now they'll be able, they'll be able to find those online. Um, so this will, this will definitely help us with our work. We'll be able to look through those books without worrying about damaging them because we'll just be able to look, through, look at the digital images instead of the physical pages. Um, we won't have to worry about mishandling them. And then we hope as we go through the images from these books that we'll be able to identify more orphan train writers and learn more about how this 
this specific agency work. So we'll have those, those that digitizing project set up in the depot, in the station master's office, so people will be able to come and watch that process happen. And I think they're, they're planning on it taking a little over a month, and they're going to take over 30,000 images. So we're excited. And we also have some big plans for the depot building itself. And as many of you know, we recently replaced the roof on the depot. And thank you to everyone who helped fund that project. Um, it you know was damaged a little bit in some storms, and so now it's all now it's all fixed, and we'll get the new guttering up next week after you all go home. So didn't want it to be a mess while you're all here, um, but we'll get that new guttering up. And then we have um, some other big plans. Oh, I guess we've also replaced the HVAC system in that building in the last year in an effort to, to better stabilize the temperature and humidity, and that has already improved the conditions in that building. Um, and our next goal is to replace the brick platform around the building. Some of you have probably noticed the bricks are not in the best shape, and the platform is becoming more and more of a tripping hazard than a sidewalk. So our goal is to replace all of those bricks, um, redo all the drainage systems around that building, and raise the platform up to the height of the, the thresholds so that all of the build, all of the doors on that building will be accessible to everyone. Um, and while that platform is being replaced, we're gonna also check on the foundation and make sure that that is still firm. We, we have had some issues with termites and water damage in the past, um, which we have stabilized and fixed and, and kind of mitigated that that concern, but now we need to check on the damage and make sure there's there's nothing else that needs to be fixed. Um, and then eventually we will also um, make a couple repairs on the exterior, just fixing some soffits, windows, cracks, and while we're at it, we'll, we'll give the depot a nice new fresh coat of paint. So hopefully next year, or maybe the next year when you come back for celebration, you'll all be a little bit blinded by the bright new orange on that building. Um, and then inside, we'll also be fixing some plaster damage and, and repainting as well. And I know Shaylee talked about that last year, and it was something we, we had started in, in the works last year and something we're still working on this year, and I'm sure it's something that we'll still be talking about next year. Um, and all of the proceeds from this year's celebration registrations and silent auction are going to be set aside for these repairs so that we can get that work done. Um, because this building is a little over 100, 100 years old and it's, it's been restored, but was restored over 15 years ago. And over 15 years, you know, some repairs just need to be made. So thank you so much for all of your support in the past. Um, and thank you for your continued support in the future. And we are gonna end a little bit early. Um, I'll stick around for questions for the next 15 minutes, but we are gonna take our lunch break now and come back at 1.30. We will be hearing from Lori Halfhide and she is gonna talk about female placing agents of the Children's Aid Society and the American Female Garden Society. So thank you all again, and we'll see you in a little over two hours. <laughs>